we've already shown the map, uh, the things that will happen in the map. Combat is going to be nearly constant the entire game today. See how far they get if they can escape this city before it crumbles. This is going to be a very deadly encounter. There's a possibility multiple players could die today, of no fault of their own. It was also not my goal to kill players, but they, right? So they grab the MacGuffins in the different corners of the map and try and get out of here all at the same time. Previously, before I had baited having like teleportation jamming, right? Throughout the city, which would explain why people aren't just evacuating and leaving. Uh, so, I both love and hate that idea. Um, I love it because it makes the party have to actually run through the the entire plotline. Hate it because it limits how we get out of here and the writing potential as well. Drift, right? Um, so we've got the divine barrier has been broken. That was taken down uh, through the use of spell gods, which are nasty, not so little buggers. So through that, they take the shield down that protects the city. That's how airships got in. Why are the drow attacking the Illumians, especially since there was a beneficial uh, symbiotic relationship between the drow and the Illumians? What happened? Um, well, of course, the drow are not necessarily doing it of their own accord. More that their deity, Loth, has made a deal with basically a beholder deity. It's a deal for power. Um, you drow feel wronged by elves. Loth thinks that the Illumians have taken advantage of the drow and have exploited their weakness in friendship, right? That that good old trope. So the drow are attacking. Um, a lot of them have like this black cataract in their eyes. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect their vision, but it's the obvious clue that something is amiss. Going through, we got the Western Library. So I was poking around, seeing where, where I wanted to start the party off. We're going to start them over here in this teleportation tower, right? So that's the party's token. This big boy is a crashed ship. So they won't see it, but it's tra translucent for me, so I know where that asset is. So party will start there. We'll get a debriefing from other Shadow Sentinels, which are Illumian Black Art or Black Ops kind of a thing. We'll run into the library. They'll learn some things. They'll get their first MacGuffin. They'll come out of the library. As they come out of the library, this airship is going to get hit with basically a summoned meteor. It's going to come down and crash into the tower, killing just about everyone inside except for a couple of the less important um, Shadow Sentinels who will desperately be digging, trying to get the, uh, the general and the other important people out of the rubble. Lost cause. As that's happening, forces are pushing up from the south towards the party, and this Shadow Dragon Rider is going to take notice of where the ship crashed and is going to go fly over and start strafing, chasing the party. Ideally, the party's just going to make a run for it. They know they have to get to here, and potentially here as well. And if they're feeling real spicy, they'll get to the fourth one. So, party's going to run. They're going to get chased by a shadow dragon for a while, they'll run, they'll run, they'll get here. Um, this one's pretty calm, uh, they find out where the second MacGuffin is, grab it, come back out. Um, they will then notice more airships are on the way, uh, out in the distance in the sky. Um, bad news. They will then move to the second objective at the Ziggurat, which will be to summon the Illumian God that lives in a demi-plane. So they'll come. They will open up the doorway to let her out. 
she will then float up over the ziggurat and join the fight. Which then will just be all out because there are three shadow dragon riders, uh, an Illumian god, multiple airships, and a few hundred on either side. Um, kind of bifurcating the city at this point. What the party does from there. Um, this point we have nothing necessarily scripted uh, and we're in improv mode from here. The party will uh, I'm hoping try to go grab the third MacGuffin. In this third MacGuffin they will see um, absolute devastation as most of these forces have either retreated back, uh, have been wiped out, or are on the verge of getting wiped out holding the bottom end of this force wall that's been put up. Um, there's an evil Illumian deity uh, who actually wants to just wipe out all of Illumians, even though he himself is one. Thaku the Silent. There's going to be some secretive followers of Wathaku who are in the library trying to destroy things before anything gets taken or saved. Um, Tao and Alfred, NPC, are going to have to reckon uh, with that. Tao, who is like devoted himself to protecting Illumians and his people, may have to kill an Illumian to protect the greater good of his people, right? That and this will really, if they get to this third one, the time crunch is going to be extremely real. Force wall will get overrun. The forces will start swarming in. I am hoping at this point to either run to the teleportation tower that's right there and try to figure something out to bounce out of there. Um, they run to the ziggurat and then try and figure something out from there, uh, which will buy them time. Or, Rag has a sword that can open a portal to just about anywhere roughly once a month. And it's been about a month. So, nice thing is though, is that whatever they decide, um, Towards the end, uh, the forces will break through. They will breach whatever thing the party is hiding behind to buy them time. And several casters will be casting counter magic at the party as they try to finish, you know, writing a circle in the dirt to teleport out. As Craig, you know, tears open the, the hole in reality to walk out of there. It's going to be disrupted. It will not fail. They will be transported somewhere. Um, half of the party is going to land on the wooden deck of a ship. The other half is going to land on stone beneath them. As they come outside, this ship here uh, that half of the party is on is going to be heading towards the other half of the party. Um, just so they don't miss it. Uh, I've got Alfred on the ship and he's going to call out to Tao who's not on the ship. They make that connection ship is going to fly like directly over them so they need to get up onto the ship or be left behind other than the fact that they're being chased by this big thing that is filled with orcs and goblins that is in pursuit of this big thing um we've got a fun dwarven captain of this ship and we've got the orc captain and friends a color-shifted and newly bearded Captain Beckett Brass. Uh, Sky Pirates. It's gonna be great. Um, we're gonna improv through that as well. I'm assuming the game's gonna be over by then. We usually don't get to everything I have written. If they get through this, they're going to recognize where they are. Um, there is nothing but sky in all directions. I'm going to be directly ripping off of Larry Niven's Smoke Ring, or Integral Trees, that whole series. And we're going to play with physics, and they'll deal with skyships. Maybe they steal the skyship. Maybe they steal this one. Um, if they do neither, they will be dropped off to a town and be given this cute little guy, right? They basically have to leave the atmospheric ring 
this round what looks like a neutron star in the center. But as you approach that neutron star, you're actually approaching an event horizon of a portal. It spits you out wherever the DM decides it's going to spit you out, which we're going to go back to their home plane, but really far away. Um, in a part of the home plane that they are not used to yet. So I drew a connection between these three land bodies. The party will get pooped out here. They'll have to cross through all of this desert. Um, they will have a boat that flies, but not very high. Um, that can help them. Just gonna be walking through the sands, or flying, traveling through the sand seas. Um, where they go, who knows, but I have a bunch of little fun things and snippets hidden all through the desert. Um, they may get to Sebenthi, which um, is the old dwarven capital before most of the dwarves were... They had like a 21 days later kind of thing break out in their capital, wiped out most of them, some of them got away and weren't afflicted. They can either go down here, then get to Cradle Thane, then come back to their their plot of land, which is where they've been trying to get back to the last couple months. Uh, they'll go past it, back around, and then come back to their plot of land. Guessing they're going to take this western path. They could, however, take the eastern path, which will just be the longest, longest slog 